Over the past year have seen a rise in subculture in comics, a group that has been pegged by the media and readers as a hateful mob full of angry people that were deemed as racist, sexist, and bigoted. However, is that the actual case? The community that formed the Comicsgate group certainly have their horrible eggs, like any other group, but it's becoming increasingly more difficult to ignore the ever-growing trend. And I do think that despite the fact that there are many in the group that are very backwards thinking, there are some valid points to be made. Today's video is dedicated to a shockingly contentious issue in the comics industry. The role that social media and agendas play in not only the creation of comics, but the coverage and consumption of comics as well. The beginning of Comicsgate in many ways started with a simple milkshake. On July 2017, five days after the death of legendary comics publisher Flo Steinberg, a group of Marvel Comics female staff went out to celebrate her by ordering milkshakes. One of the ladies, Heather Antos, decided to snap a picture and post it on Twitter. And that's when things took a turn. While many celebrated and praised the female creators, there were a group that were, well, let's just say less than enthusiastic. One Twitter user posted, quote, Can we just get off of feminism and social justice and actually print stories? God DC looks better and better. A tweet that actually had no context to the image at hand. Another user posted, quote, Heather Antos, the girl who is single-handedly destroying Marvel Comics. Amazing. And the list kept going on and on and on, ranging from accusations of being fake geek girls to social justice warrior hires and worse. This should go without saying, but statements like these or any form of harassment should not be accepted, and I think that despite how far the comics community has come, there is a group of individuals that feel the need to take pot shots at any form of diversity and representation in the medium that we love. While many creators and fans sought to rally behind these women, one YouTuber sought to take advantage of the opposing side, and in doing so, became one of the biggest faces of Comicsgate. Of course, I'm speaking about diversity in comics. In many ways, the rise of Comicsgate has a lot to do with diversity in comics. The controversial YouTuber as of this recording is closing in on over 100,000 subscribers and has been a name that has drawn the ire of many fans and creators. Richard Mayer, who runs the channel, creates videos where he thumbs through comics and gives his reviews, cracks crude jokes, and posts videos focusing on the thought that Marvel has a social justice warrior agenda. Mayer has also been known in the social media circles for making crude and hateful comments to online creators in the guise of, it's just jokes. In December 2017, Bleeding Cool actually listed Mayer and his YouTube channel in their end of the year wrap up as one of the most influential people in the medium calling Mayer, and I quote, the center of alt-right comics hate speech with the ability to get comics creators who really should know better to engage with him, even if they are screaming for blood. Perhaps Mayer's most famous online spat was with legendary writer Mark Wade. Wade, in many ways, has been the center of vitriol for a lot of the members in the comics gay community, and things kicked off in a big way when last year... Wade posted on his Facebook page, and I quote, For anyone attending this weekend's excellent Baltimore Comic Con, I have an important request. There is a serial YouTube harasser named Richard C. Mayer who I'm told may be attending as a fan. If anyone sees this gentleman or any of his friends, I need you to come and find me and tell me immediately, even if I'm on a panel. Come up and interrupt. Please circulate this request as widely as possibly can through all your social media accounts. Fellow pros tell each other, this is about attempting to lessen the harassment of women in comics, and it's important. Please spread the word. Thank you. Many in the comics gay community saw this as a threat and a call to attack Mayer at the convention. The fact is that Wade should have known better. As a professional in the industry calling out Mayer in a rather brazen and ambiguous way on such a public platform left many to speculate what his intentions were. Had Wade simply directly approached Mayer on one of his social media platforms in a more private manner, perhaps things could have gone a different way. Wade followed his previous statement with, quote, I'll be having a civil conversation with Richard and others next week after Baltimore, for those of you hanging on to my every word tonight. I don't know what can come of a conversation, and I'm not fooling myself into thinking that the industry is in store for a comics love fest anytime soon. But I think we're all agreed that hatred and rage, speaking as an occasional rager when I lose my cool, have reached the point where no one is being served and nothing is improving. Night folks, sue in Baltimore. Which despite what you may have heard, is not a threat. 
Eventually, Wade and Mayer would have their discussion and Mayer reached out to Bleeding Cool stating, and I quote, I wasn't intimidated by these people. I noticed in multiple videos a week or two ago that I was not going to go to Baltimore because I was going to New York Comic Con, which is just four blocks from my house. And also, the cost of trains in America is prohibitive. I just read your article and it seems very accurate in my opinion. The only thing to add is that Captain Cummings, a YouTuber, negotiated all of us to talk in a Google Hangout, but there were technical difficulties, so we tabled it for next week sometime. Although I didn't like the way that Mark Wade made all the allegations, we did seem to talk like gentlemen and it seemed like everything cooled down. Additionally, I asked for people to give specific complaints and I can address those. For instance, a prominent DC creator at DC asked me to stop using two of the favorite tongue-in-cheek catchphrases I use frequently on my channel and I agreed to do that. Additionally, as a message of good faith and an ally to Wade's fears that I would misinterpret him, I offered not to discuss him in any other video or record anything that he said, not that I would have in the first place. So my channel is going to kind of oddly not be discussing him either, even while I discuss things that are related to what he said. This however would not be the last time that these two would cross paths. You see, Richard Mayer would go on to start an Indiegogo campaign for his 90s throwback comic called Jawbreakers. This would be Mayer's second crowdfunded project, however was larger in scale, with John Mandolin providing art. Personally, I've seen some of the pages and some of the dialogue, and it's not really for me. However, as of this recording, his Indiegogo has amassed a total of over $375,000, a number that is admittingly very impressive. The success of Jawbreakers would eventually draw the attention of Antarctic Press, a comic publisher that has been known to print politically contentious books that parody and celebrate Donald Trump. Things would not go over so well. Following the announcement that they would publish Jawbreakers, several retailers took to Twitter to proclaim that they would refuse to sell the books in their stores, a move that angered many in the comics gate community. However, things would come to a boil when Mark Wade posted on his Facebook page that quote, I have a call into Antarctic Press. Until I hear back, I'm hesitantly willing to give them the benefit of the doubt that they don't really understand who or what they're getting into business with. which." though it would seem to be a stretch, is a possibility. If I do hear back, I'll report in. Curious as to how they feel about publishing creators whose mass marketing strategy is to allegedly encourage their fans to threaten the employees of store and or harass and one-star review bomb stores that don't order their product. Are we as creators responsible for the actions of our fans? Ultimately, of course, not, but it is morally bankrupt. Shortly after, Antarctic Press would release this statement. After careful consideration, it is the decision of Antarctic Press to not release the comic series Jawbreakers. Antarctic Press is a staunch believer in creator's rights and giving creators a chance to showcase their creation and allowing the creation to be judged on its merits. Many forces, many of them should be viewed with great trepidation about how our society acts have led us to the decision, we do not take this decision lightly as we do not believe that there should be separation between art and the artist, and that separation has been blurred in our decision. We appreciate all our supporters and detractors in the process. Thank you for taking the time to read our statement. The statement will be removed in seven days. As you can imagine, things did not go over well. This led people to claim that Wade had bullied Antarctic Press into not publishing the books. While there is no definitive proof that the phone call that he placed led to Antarctic Press not publishing Jawbreakers, the timing is admittingly kind of suspicious. Antarctic Press would eventually take to Twitter to state that they had quote, not been bullied by Wade. Which leads us to today. Mayer eventually went on to start his own publishing brand, Splato Comics, where him and other comic skaters such as Ethan Van Scriver published their own crowdfunded books. A few weeks ago, Mayer went on to the Jim Jefferies show in a segment that was meant to skewer the YouTuber. However, in my personal opinion, I think it backfired really hard. The segment itself was poorly edited and came off more as a hit piece than anything else, something that people in the Comicsgate community quickly pointed out. The issue with a segment like this is that despite the fact that Jim Jefferies revealed Mayer had said some very disgusting and hateful things on a podcast, literally sucked her way into the uh, comic industry <laughs> is a c dumpster it came off as more of an attack and it emboldened mayor and his followers if you were to ask me today what the main goal of comics gate is i couldn't do it 
Some members of it claim it's an anti-diversity campaign, a push to make comics great again, that we just want great stories in comics, or a movement to remove politics from comics. Do I think that everyone that subscribes to Comicsgate community is a racist? No, 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 not at all. However, you can't deny that like in any community, there are its extremists, and those are the ones that cause more harm than good. Attacking creators is never a good thing, like I already stated. At the same time, those that are on the other side that constantly want to shut out creators with different beliefs, political backgrounds, try to get people fired from their jobs, or filter everything that we read in favor of only purely progressive thoughts, led to this group forming. There has to be a balance. I'm not interested in simply reading stories from one viewpoint. I want to hear more viewpoints, from people that I disagree with, controversial viewpoints. Pretending that things don't exist or demeaning a large swath of readers has led to the creation of Comicsgate. And while yes, like I previously stated, there are a group of people that are part of Comicsgate that I do no doubt are racist, sexist, and bigoted. And while I'm certainly all for the inclusion of more diverse characters, I think there's also those that simply just want to read good comics and not have an agenda shoved down their throats. Comics are art. Comics have the ability to explore more than just one side of thought. They have the ability to open the possibility of civil discussion among both sides. We just have to be open and willing enough to listen. Guys, thank you so much for checking out my video. I hope this was informative for you. If you've never heard of Comicsgate or the ongoing battle that's going on right now online, uh, I do urge you to educate yourself, look into it as well, and of course, you can follow me on Facebook, Twitter, and my Patreon is located down below in the the description i appreciate you guys let me know what you think down below in the comment section and this goes without saying let's keep it civil please if it gets out of hand or if it gets too bad i'm just gonna end up locking the comment section down so thanks guys i love you bye